Alright, so we're here at Gamescom, and for many people, at least for me, the highlight is the reveal of the Call of Duty multiplayer. Uh, I was very impressed with the amount of uh, info you have, uh, had, and uh, I was wondering, was that a, a matter of, of confidence, and, and also how did you experience uh, the whole thing from your side? It seemed like there were most people were very happy. Yeah, I appreciate you saying that. I mean, we are we pretty do. happy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've had three years to develop this, and Sledgehammer Games is the studio since uh, right after MW3 finished to really take a chance and innovate. And so we wanted to show fans how much we've changed Call of Duty, how much we've brought, how much innovation. It's true to what makes Call of Duty great, but the, as you saw, there's a ton in there. All right, and of course, the, the first thing people are going to see is the exoskeleton. Can you tell us about the ideas behind it and, and how that's going to work in gameplay? Yeah, so, uh, you know, the exoskeleton is one of the, the first things that we came up with when we were working on the game. And uh, that was almost three years ago. So the exoskeleton changed the way you play Call of Duty. And uh, first, you probably saw the boost jump. So it changes the way, I mean, all of a sudden now you're, you're, we're playing verticality, right? We've got uh, uh, ways of attacking from above. It changes the way that we build the levels because we have to now think in uh, you know, a different way. So that in itself is a big, big changer. And that goes across um, campaign, multiplayer, and co-op. All right, and so besides the, the, the boosting and jumping and dashing with the exoskeleton, you also have the ability and the launcher on that. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so much in here, but just to the EXO itself, you're right. We have EXO perks, EXO abilities, and EXO launcher to change how you play. And, and the abilities are really great ways to augment your EXO. You can almost think of it like an attachment to your EXO that augments how you play. And everything from cloak, uh, hover, and shield, to stim, and mobile trophy system. There's a bunch of ways you can customize your play style. And on top of that, you have the launcher. Now, the launcher is the consolidation of tacticals and lethals and new equipment that really allow you to use fan favorites like Frag and Semtech and some new things like the Threat Grenade to really have a balanced experience. And you know, we found that it was important. You're moving so fast with boost and boost jump and dodge that you can no longer throw a grenade fast enough. So the launcher allows you to push that thing out in the world and really go after a guy who might be boosting out of your way. All right, and one of the highlights for me was going back to pick 10, which you have sort of improved on uh, going with pick 13. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, everybody seemed to like, you know, pick 10 from, uh, from Black Ops 2. So, you know, for us, it was uh, how do we make it better, give them more customization, more personalization. And, uh, you know, pick 13 just seemed like uh, we're giving them a lot more at this point, right? A lot more that they can, they can add perks and they can put their abilities in. Um, what else? Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's exactly that. Score streaks now Score incorporated streak. into pick 13. It's the most customization you've ever had in Creative Class. All right, yeah, and talking about score streaks, you also did something really cool there with that you can actually sort of change the score streaks. Can you explain that? Absolutely. We've really taken a close look at score streaks, what makes them great from the past, what we wanted to do. And so we've got customized score streaks now. We've got uh, co op score streaks. We've got map based score streaks. There's a lot in there. And customized score streaks in particular are really cool. You have a bunch of base score streaks that you've come to know and love, right? They have a certain cost associated with them. Score streaks are back. Um, and now you have the ability to modify them, to add additional functionality for an additional cost. So if you're um, a player who wants you know, three score streaks and maybe they're all in the three to 500 point range, you can do that. Or if you're a, a more hardened veteran and you want to have some really high end score streaks, you can add modules to make it pretty awesome. Or with wild cards, take a four. Or take none and use those and pick 13 in other ways. So lots of customization to make the score streak work for you. All right, and a thing that I was, was another highlight for me at the, at the show was you mentioned uh, dual goggles. Tell, tell me about that. Yeah, well, there's nothing like having a second pair of goggles. Um, yeah, well, I'm still trying to figure out how that's going to help me, but I, I figure that if the first pair breaks, now I got another one. Is, is that going to be something that influences gameplay? Or if, if other people agree with you that dual goggles is the way to go, are they going to feel that in, in gameplay? I hope that people will uh, follow me and, and go with uh, two, three, four pair of goggles um, <laughs> because it is just that cool. <laughs> All right, and that goes into the general customization. You're really evolving that thing as well. Can you explain that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, we took, <laughs> like Glenn, we wanted to know how to reward him, and we thought maybe five or six pair of goggles is the right way. But yeah. in all seriousness, who doesn't like to get rewarded as you play? And we know that the backbone of our progression system, XP, is pretty compelling, and you unlock a bunch of stuff along the way. But 
that wasn't enough. We wanted to really reward you for everything you do, including time played and challenges. And so we came up with a Call of Duty loot system that we call Supply Drops. And it's awesome. You know, over a thousand rewards from custom weapons. There's nearly 400 custom weapons to all kinds of gear like yeah. goggles yeah. and other uh, cosmetic rewards yeah, <laughs> to uh, um, new exos, cosmetic exo changes to reinforcements, which are like perks and score streaks that you can use uh, one time only in a match. It is the most reward based Call of Duty to date. And it's a huge system. I mean, you just don't add supply drops. It was, uh, it's, it's a really big deal. And, uh, you know, with all the attachments, with all the different um, pieces that you can get, we were talking about billions of different uh, combinations of characters. So no one's ever going to look or be the same, which is cool. All right, and I think that one of the difficult things about Call of Duty is that you have players like me who spend a lot of time and and are I'd like to think in the upper half of, of, of how well I am, and then I have friends who don't play a lot. And one of the things I also really like was the the co-op kill streak and, and something like loot system where people can get things that they might not be able to get otherwise. Can you explain that? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, the co-op score streak is. Uh, you know, like we talked about the other day, is you know you can get the warbird, and um, you know take my you know somebody on my team, Michael here, and bring him up, and who may never have experienced it before, and um, it's probably actually the other way around, but um, that, well, that was almost pure honesty. That was, that was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and um, uh, yeah, you should. <laughs> should, uh, but uh, you know, so they can they can experience it. They, so maybe they're down there tagging the enemies, and then um, uh, you know I'm taking them out or he's taking it out. But th we just felt that that's a way of letting people who will never normally get that um, experience it. And um, what was the other question? I was just wondering in general, actually leading into about hitting the balance between yeah. like you have pro players who want to play this, and you have people who are like scared to get killed all the time. You know. And so have um, where we uh, well you talked about um, loot or the supply drops, and that's really just based on the amount of time that you play. So um, you know a person who's just maybe kind of getting in there and, and learning it, they're still going to earn that, and uh, because it, it's about time. Now, a person like yourself can earn it by taking on more challenges, and get more. But um, the other one is very simple. You just play. All right, and I managed actually to talk to Team Envy, who was at the event, and I also saw that you guys, you at least were at the MLG Anaheim, uh, so they seemed very happy, but how do you, uh, it sounded like you were thinking a lot about uh, COD Esports, uh, and you, you talked about we were going to have ranked playlists and all that stuff, uh, so can you talk about that, and also how, how are you going to go about that with maps and, and all that, because you sort of have to design it for, for both uh, and weapons and all that as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, we have 100 million players who played the game. And so we listen to all the fans, right? And we take all that feedback in. And so a lot of the, the great overlap, you know, fans love Capture the Flag. Esports loves Capture the Flag, right? Fans love Hardpoint. So does Esports. So it's not like we were trying to cater specifically to Esports, but supporting all fans. And Esports as a group of fans, we wanted to also listen to their needs. And there's some things that we've heard loud and clear, like expanded broadcaster mode, and um, ranked playlists, and objective-based uh, games, and a number of areas that we thought, hey, look, if that makes both the playing experience and the spectator experience better, we want to offer that to all of our fans. And I firmly believe, and I know Glenn shares this, that. It's not uh, mutually exclusive. You know, balancing the game for competitors means that we're balancing it for all fans, right? We don't want overpowered weapons. We don't want combinations of uh, pick 13, create a class to be overpowered. And frankly, the esports competitors are the first to figure those combinations out for us. So we think that helps the play experience for everyone. All right, and you also had a new game mode, actually two. Yeah, I mean, we were looking at really cool ways to bring more sort of team dynamics to play, um, and you had a chance to play it. I mean, Uplink's a lot of fun, right? It really takes objective-based gameplay and sort of, I don't know, casual sports together. Like, think like playing team yeah. basketball, I don't know, on the yeah. weekends or soccer match where it's fun, it's fast, and Uplink is a lot of fun in particular. A lot of strategy. A lot of strategy. Uh, yeah, they're working together. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely one I feel like you can't just go in alone and, and win. You need to play together. Absolutely.
And it's based around the concept that you have a satellite drone and you and your team need to take your satellite drone to its uplink. Um, and so you pass it around and you get a strategy to put the satellite uh, drone in the uplink. And it becomes really fast and you can pass it back and forth and you can steal it from another player. So there's a lot of um, sort of sports analogies that um, feed into uplink that make it really fast and fun and competitive that we think people are going to have a kick out of. Well, we're seeing it. You know, we're seeing how, how much fun people are having with it. I mean, it's really resonating well. Uh, All right, and finally, I might have forgotten something because there was so much at, at the event, but uh, maps. Uh, you were, it seemed like very cool maps that worked really well for the game modes. You were also continuing with the dynamic. Uh, there was the San Francisco map that had the tsunami. Uh, so thoughts on, on the maps, and, and is, is that smaller end or bigger end of, of maps? Yeah, so, you know, and Glenn can talk about sort of the art direction and how we really focused visually, but from the gameplay side, um, yeah, lots of things we went after there. You know, we looked at what made Black Ops 2 so popular fans, and we knew as fans and players ourselves that it's, you know, the small to medium sized maps. It's the quick to engagement gameplay that Call of Duty is known for. It's sort of the clean three lane design. Um, now with added vertica verticality, yeah, which is yeah. interesting. Um, and you know, some maps have dynamic events, some maps have map-based score streaks. Um, there's just a lot of ways to really allow that um, really core Call of Duty map design that people come to know and love with the addition of the EXO. And then with three years to work on it artistically, you know, we've worked a lot there too. I mean, some of the maps that uh, we introduced, uh, we've been working on for almost two years. I mean, it's a matter of like, uh, you know, really getting it right, um, spending the time and, uh, um, uh, the, now, the, as far as the artwork goes, I mean, the way we, we, you know, we wanted to show something new. I mean, we want the artwork, uh, we want the, them to look as good as a single player. And um, so we spent a lot of time on it. And uh, in the characters as well, if you see the, uh, the virtual lobby, you know, oh, yeah. how nice that looks. Yeah. I'm not sure we talked about that too much, but... Uh, no, let, let's talk about that, because that's a, a thing that a lot of games I feel like have been struggling with. What do you do while you wait for the next uh, game? And, and you've solved that in a brilliant way, I think. Yeah, I think, um, you know, once we, we, we had that idea from the beginning, how do we show you what you're, you're getting, right? We have all this cool stuff, right? And so um, uh, built a virtual lobby. And, uh, and so not only do you see what you look like, but you see what all the other guys on your team look like. And uh, uh, you're right. I think that people are going to be going in there. They're going to be playing it. They're going to what, what, like, what's that guy got? How do you get that, right? And so between getting loot, you know, you get loot and you put it on your character or you, um, you earn something and put it on your character. I think you're going you're gonna to keep going back, going back. How do I make, make a character look really cool? Yeah, and you know, the, the, the concept of loot and a thousand rewards, to Glenn's point, it's all about showing off, right? And there's two ways, right? With the virtual lobby, you get to see all those amazing combinations um, because what's better than showing off with all your cool stuff? Yeah. Um, equally with custom weapons, with more than 350 you know, weapons in the game, we thought, how, how best to allow the player to figure out what's right for you? So we created the virtual lobby. I mean, there's the virtual firing range. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's awesome, right? I mean, look, you're gonna get all these great custom weapons through loot. And we want you to be able to jump right into the virtual firing range, figure out if it works for you. I mean, I don't know about you, I'm guessing you're like me. I don't want to get a new weapon, go into the match, and not feel great about it, and watch my KD take a, a nosedive because of it, right? So now with the press of a button, virtual firing range, figure out if it's right for you, come back to creative class, sort it out, deck out your gear in the virtual lobby. But they're fun, too. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the firing range is, you know, going in there, I find myself going in there playing and uh, I'm starting to see more of the team, keep playing and playing and playing. So there's so much in, uh, in the multiplayer and, uh, and the game as a whole. And I think that's what the three years has allowed us, is to make a game um, that's really deep, you know, a lot of depth in it. And uh, I think there's something for everyone in it. Yeah, it, it was actually great, especially at an event like this, where where you you jump in and you don't know any of the guns, and it's like, okay, which gun am I going to use? Yeah. And the same, like, am I going to use an ACOG or a red dot? Right. Actually, go in and just try it and and be con uh, like feel good about the yeah. gun that you're actually using in uh, in the game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, uh, as you were saying, actually, I, one of the times I was like having so much fun. I was like, oh wait, the the map is starting. I was just yeah. wanted to take out all the guys. Yeah. All right. And you know, sorry, I didn't mean to cut yeah. you off, but. We're still not talking about everything, right? We got new perks, we got yeah. new attachments, we've got so much new in the game that we've been talking about. We got a brand new practice round where you get to play with friends. Um, there's probably 10 more things that we haven't even talked about yet. So to Glenn's point, with three years, focus on innovation, and just to come out today here at Gamescom and say, look, 
this is the most innovative, biggest offering in Call of Duty with the EXO transforming how you play. Let's just show it and let's see how people react. And, and we've been really happy with kind of how it's gone. All right, I'm sure most people out there know when the game is coming out. But for the, for the last couple of guys, when is it out? And you have the Day Zero thing as well. Yeah, I mean, it's coming out November 4th on uh, on all the platforms. And on, um, you know, the big thing, I think, is uh, November 3rd, Day Zero. And so if you get it uh, pre-order, um, you're going to get it a day early. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks, man.